we didn't have so, the support for the uh, Second Amendment we've had, that a lot of the press wouldn't have the First Amendment now. And uh, maybe they've abused the First Amendment more than we <laughs> the governors <laughs> have the Second. Uh, that's possible. Yeah. Uh, I think that we had some mutual friends, uh, Bing Crosby and Phil Harris and Andy Devine. Oh, good Lord, Lord, yes. Oh, sure. All hunters and fishermen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just how I knew them. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask you is uh, a, a boy's first gun is kind of special to him. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we talk about around the campfire a lot. And I was just wondering if you would share with our readers uh, your first gun, what your yes. impression was. Yes, I uh, can very easily. Uh, I don't know when or how uh, my love for them ever began. I was, uh, I liked guns. I was never allowed to have one. And it dated back to a time before my birth when my father, uh, who had been out hunting, uh, came in the kitchen and my mother, just for fun, picked He'd left his gun standing in the corner of the kitchen, picked up the gun and said, your money or your life? <laughs> and he very quietly said, Nellie, put the gun down. And she was laughing and said, well, you know, it isn't loaded. And he knew that he had carelessly put the gun down without unloading it. Ooh. And uh, he just kept saying, he didn't tell her that, he just kept saying, Nellie, put the gun down. And she pointed to the floor and pulled the trigger and then he had to revive her and, oh, and fix the whole hole in the floor of the kitchen. So um, there were no guns in our house. But uh, for seven years during high school and college, I was a lifeguard at a natural forest park, uh, Lowell Park, Dixon, Illinois. And it's, uh, they even had to get a state law change to have that. It's the James Russell Lowell family uh, gave this park to the city it's outside the city limits uh, by a few miles, mm -hmm. and it had to be uh, had to have a special law in order to have a city park out in the country. And the condition was that it would always be preserved in its natural state, other than the necessary roads and facilities for, like, having a beach and so forth. And uh, they've kept it, and it's widely known in that area. But one of those years, and I, I have to be honest with you, I can't remember one. I think it was while I was still in high school, though. I'm sure it was. Um, they um, decided to have a, an annual big Labor Day, which was about usually the last day of the summer for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, big water carnival, mm -hmm. boat races and swimming races and diving events and everything else. And uh, one of the big features was across the river swim starting on the other side, running in the water, swimming uh, across and landing at the, the beach. And the river was about 200 yards wide there. And uh, I wanted to be in that one single event. And we solved the lifeguarding problem by my retiring as lifeguard uh, that afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and I won the cross the river thing. And the, Prizes were uh, uh, things donated by merchants and so forth. And one of the reasons for wanting to be in that was the prize was a bolt action 22 rifle. Is that right? And I won that rifle. And uh, I guess by that time my father relented and I was able to have my rifle. You kept it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you use it for? Well, um, actually, Plinking, mm -hmm. <laughs> but because uh, uh, there wasn't much opportunity right. to do anything else, except at one occasion when uh, another fellow and myself decided, and, uh, and this was in the in the winter, uh, that and the river hadn't frozen over yet, that we were going to try our hand at self-sustaining camping, and we were going to canoe up the river, and oh boy. The day we were going to do it, it turned freezing cold, and we were paddling up the river, and there was a point we'd picked out across from Lowell Park where we were going to see if we couldn't get some squirrels, and that was going to be our dinner that night. And uh, That's confidence. Uh, yeah, we were. I was the only one who had the confidence, I found out, fortunately. 
And we finally, the snow falling, a real blizzard and all, we got to where we were going to camp. But we'd gotten some squirrels, and I got my first squirrel with my rifle. And uh, we got there, and it was a place called Lost Nations, and quite a wilderness area, but there were people that had cabins in this place, uh, summer cabins. And um, we got permission from the caretaker of this whole area. He opened one of the cabins, cabins for us, and we slept in front of the fireplace with a fire going in this summer cabin. And it was then that um, Squirrels frozen stiff by that time. I'm sure. And uh, then uh, that uh, my more experienced companion uh, went down in his duffel bag and came out with a quart fruit jar, which his mother had given him filled with stew. And <laughs> we warmed the stew over the fireplace. <laughs> We're very grateful for it. And the next day, we had to turn around and cancel our trip and start down river because uh, we had to break ice to get the canoes back out into the river. Oh boy. But that was my only real, then uh, with that gun, that was my only real experience. Mm -hmm. But just having it yeah. was enough for me. That makes a difference then. Yeah. I still have the first 22 rifle I had and my three children began their shooting with it. So I kind of hung on to that. The Lafayette. That's kind of special. But I'll tell you what I did with mine, because it was a single shot. And what I did with mine was years later, I had the uh, butt cut down mm -hmm. so that I could teach my son as a small boy. I always felt two things with your kids, that rather than hoping you can keep the guns away from them, you teach them about it, teach them about them as early as possible, and that in swimming. That, uh, Instead of don't go near the water, having been a lifeguard, I taught them at an age when I, uh, they literally had to be thrown in. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that though, I never believed in that, throw them in and they yeah. automatically swim, I, I taught them. And uh, so I cut it down now, I don't know what has happened. I think I gave it to someone then, after he grew up, mm -hmm. someone who wanted to do the same thing with a child. Uh, and I gave it to a, a friend. Do you still enjoy plinking? Oh yes, yeah. I've, I've never been or had an awful lot of opportunity to hunt. I've, I've had to go for rodents, uh, mm -hmm. particularly in California there as a rancher. When you know there the ground squirrel is, uh, is on the list as something to be eliminated. The state will send people to eliminate them right. because of the bubonic yeah. plague uh, uh, thing which they seem to be uh, They'll be the carriers. There. Yes, that's right. And there are millions of them. Yeah. Yeah. But my number of guns has grown. Has it? Yes. Yeah. So one of the questions I, uh, I submitted in writing is, has to do with that, so maybe I'll find out some oh. more about that later on. All right, yes. Yeah. And, and since some people have heard about that, uh, but I like them, I, I've had people uh, uh, give me things like presentation pieces and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. You've got some beautiful guns. Yes. <laughs> beautiful rifles. Yeah. I have a gun that, Mr. Weatherby will forgive me for this, but it has to be the slowest shooting gun in the world. <laughs> a Weatherby bolt action that my wife got me as a birthday present. I happen to shoot left-handed. Oh, yeah. So she had a left-handed bolt action made for me. Mm -hmm. Now it isn't the fault of the gun. It's my fault that this is a slow shooting gun because when I go for the bolt, I find myself first reaching over here. You've gotten so used to right hand bolt. Uh, yes, <laughs> reaching over and doing this, and then after I fumble around, I have to come back over here, and it's an entirely foreign feeling for me to raise the bolt and pull it back this way. And I'm so used to doing it yeah. this way. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I have to tell Roy about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a couple of beautiful weather beasts. They're beautiful guns. Yes. If you ever want to go duck hunting or any other thing else, let me know. We've got some great hunting in Louisiana. Well, uh, I'd have to bring my shotgun. I've got a shotgun. It was uh, Bob Taylor's. And oh, yeah. We were very close friends, and after his death, uh, his widow gave me this particular gun. Is that right? It's by that, well, maybe there's more than one, but 
I don't know, you heard it as, as one of very famous Belgian uh, gun makers. Yes, right. In, he's in Liege, Belgium, right. Uh, yeah. I, it's I, a 20 caliber army. I knew Bob. 20 gauge, I should right. say. <laughs> gauge. He, was, he was a wonderful person. Yes. I mean, and he, he was a great hunter. He, yes, he was. I made one trip around the world with him with a, with a shooting team. Ah. And I got to know him pretty well on that. Well. He's a, and he used to hunt ducks in Louisiana with a friend of mine a lot. Well. Uh, this is the thrust of this piece that I'm doing is really uh, trying to get some exposure on prominent people who are pro-gun and pro-hunting because there are a lot of, a lot of presidents, a lot of governors, and uh, to try to dispel some of the idea that just because you like to hunt or you like to own guns, that you're a wild-eyed fanatic. Well, yes, because the, the thing is, if you look at, well, first of all, it's my understanding that there are more deer uh, in the United States than there were back when, <laughs> when Washington was at Valley Forge. Far more. And most of these rules, such as the, the duck stench for the, the gun hunters, the preservation, using that for uh, wetlands preservation, it is the hunters with an interest in preserving their sport that are responsible for most of the laws that have preserved the, the game animals in this country. And uh, so much so for, for them and for what they've they've done, and, and most people don't recognize that. They certainly don't, and that's one of the problems of how do, how do we get this across to people, that this is true. Yeah. Teddy Roosevelt and was a great hunter, but also one of the great conservationists of all that. And the other thing about the right of the honest citizen to have guns, I still say in California, when I was governor, we did the right thing about so supposed gun control, and that is an individual committing a crime, convicted of a crime, if he had a gun in his possession when he committed the crime, whether he used it or not, add five to 15 years to the prison sentence. And they have now increased that also. They've added to that, uh, since I left, mandatory prison sentence if carrying a gun, that you can't just put them on probation in their conviction. That was effective too, wasn't it? Uh, yes, it was. There was an immediate uh, drop in armed robbery and that, that kind of crime. Um, I not only believe in that, but I remember an incident uh, when I was sports announcing in Des Moines, Iowa, and a friend, uh, widow of a man who'd been in the military, gave me his that 1911 model automatic, 45 automatic. And I had an apartment right on the street and next door to a hospital and across the street a nurse's home and I was on the second floor and I was lying there half asleep and I heard voices and I was not paying much attention around the street down below and it wasn't common to hear that except that there was something about the tone and I found myself saying what if it, you know what if I were a witness something had happened what would I say I had heard and just about that time, I heard her voice say, take anything, but leave me alone. And I went to the window, and right beneath my window was this gal with her arms in the air and a suitcase sitting down there, and this fellow with a gun on her. Mm. She was a nurse coming back from a case. And I got my 45, <laughs> and... Uh, I stood back, I'm up there in the dark, and the window would put that 45 around and down, and I said, drop it and get going. <laughs> and he whirled around with a gun, and so he couldn't see anybody, but he saw that 45 pointing at him, and all of a sudden he just turned and ran. He didn't drop the gun, he just turned and ran. And I told her, I said, wait a minute, and I put on a robe and I went down. I didn't tell her that I didn't have any ammunition for the gun. <laughs> but he didn't know that either. And I took her over to the hospital and went back with that. Mr. President, I hate to interrupt you, but you've got a couple appointments stacking up. Yeah, all right. I know I have. That. Well, listen, I, again, I'm certainly with your speech. Appreciate you seeing me. And again, thank you for everything you've done for us. It's great. If I can be of help any other any other time with anything, my background is resource management. I'd be delighted to help. Thank you very much. I want to give you a copy of our magazine too. You may have. It.
Yes, I've many times uh, seen that. My wife took the cover pictures. Oh, well, yeah. Louisiana yeah. critters. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.